Where Arts and Adventure summits the airwaves. This is the Ogden Arts and Adventure Show. I am R. Brandon Long, along with the host of the Literally Podcast, local author Case Johnston. Hello. Hello. Uh, we are your hosts for the greatest podcast in all the land. Um, Todd cannot be with us because he is attending Sundance in Park City. So I did send him an invite to see if he could dial in, but it doesn't even look like he's seen my invite. I emailed it. I text it and I Facebook message it to him. So do you have a read receipt? Cause he could just be ignoring you. He might, I have, a, I mean, he's at Sundance. Yeah. He, yeah. He might be ignoring me. Yeah. So, but if he chimes in then we'll check in with what's going on at Sundance cool. on the art side. So, uh, case, tell us a little something about yourself real quick as, uh, I don't think we've had many people actually fill in for Todd before. So, uh, this is a first, but I had, I knew your, I mean, your quality. Yeah. So, so that's well, why I called you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to introduce myself and then I let everybody talk for the next 45 minutes. <laughs> uh, but, you know, uh, Todd, yeah, you can't, you can't fill in for Todd. It's, it's great to be here. Um, I'm, I'm excited. I mean, I, I, I'm sure you guys have talked about this before about how you switched, switched the, switched the podcast to the, the arts we, as the second part yep. of it. Arts and yeah, adventure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yep. But I, I love it. It's great. It's oh, good. It's great, great to be here. Um, local, okay. you know, grew up here in Ogden. Um, yeah. Left, what school did you go to? St. Joe's. And you teach there now. Yeah. Oh, do you? Yeah. 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 All the way through. Um, and so, uh, yeah. So, I mean, the everything's. Do you ever say to yourself, like, I wish I knew how to quit you, St. Joe's? I had daily. Uh, no, no, I would say uh, every period. I, I would say that the bell rings and I, I kind of want to walk right out um, with the students. Okay. Um, wow. Okay. This is a public podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody, I don't think anybody like, um, it, doesn't is, know about the plight of teachers these days. Oh, the okay. students are amazing. Everything else is difficult. Really? It's that, and cause that's a, a, a private school, right? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, yeah. 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 And I got it easy up there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anyways, that was too much. Well, <laughs> 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 All right. Sitting next to case is, uh, representing gear 30, which is not me. So this is, this is fun. So we have Greg Bean, the new general manager of gear 30 from since October, I believe. And Devin, when did you start at the shop? Mm. You got to step closer to that microphone too, by the way. Something like July, July. Okay. Yeah. yeah very good. Um, and then over here we have Jan Larson. Hi, Jan. Um, I don't know if you, you don't work for SSEF. Do you, you just represent no, them? I used to be on the foundation. I was on it for almost 30 years. Okay. And I was, like a board member. Uh huh. Okay. I was, and then um, I did work at Snow Basin on the race department during the Olympics. Yeah. So, so SSEF, Snow Basin Ski Education Foundation. Correct. Um, and you, did you, when did you see like, we need to make more money, let's bring in BAMP? How long ago was that? Probably about 22 years ago. And yeah, I, I was going to say 114 years ago. No, um, I'm not but, that old yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, what happened was one of the gals on the ski patrol and the race department got this information from Banff and she kept throwing it away. And then finally she says, here, take this, you know, maybe you can do something with it. And yeah. So she's I, handed it off to someone who knows, so knows I, how to make things happen. I presented it to the ski team or the ski board. And, um, I said, I think we should do it no matter what, if we fail the first year, that's the way it is. And, and, uh, we're not going to lose anything. So we started with 450 audience, and that was the first time. W which venue was that? It was at Perry's Egyptian Theater. So it's always been there. One year we had to go to Weaver State, um, but we have always been at Perry's. Okay. Okay. And then uh, after that, it just took off, and we had one night um, a year because that's how Banff could fit us in. It was They have a tour that goes... Um, all over the United States. And you guys have to, you pay for it, and then you make it up with ticket sales or something? Uh -huh. and that's, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And then um, we progressed to two nights a week, or a, a year, and then after that, she says, why don't you, you're selling out each night, let's try three. So we went to three nights. That wasn't that long ago, right? That's probably been five years, mm -hmm. probably five years. And we've sold out each each night, and it's it's just worked out great. You took COVID off, right? COVID was, that was a bad year. We didn't do it then. Yeah. Last year, um, we did two nights and 
the Banff Road Warrior was supposed to come down, and they closed the border, and they wouldn't let anybody come down. So, so yeah, and the Road Warrior is someone who yeah. represents Banff and talks about each film and that yeah, kind of they stuff. Come, yeah. yeah, exactly. They're wonderful. So Barbara McConville and I did the Banff thing last year, and we had two nights. And so this year we're back to three nights with a real road warrior. Heather Walter is her name, and she is okay. awesome. She's been here before, and she's fantastic. Awesome. Um, okay, so, so. This, is the, this is the best part, though. You have to go, when, when's the festival? October? It's October. October? It starts basically like Hall Halloween weekend in October, and okay. then it goes through the first week of November. You just fly up there to Banff each year? Oh, yeah, I just fly up there. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, I, used to, I used to drive um, because I, I love to travel. I like to drive. Yeah. I go up through the Missouri River Valley. and What is that, 12 hours, 16 well, you, hours? You, no, you drive to Shelby, Montana, and then spend the night in this little hotel. Which I mean, this place is like about this big. And <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so then the next day you go in uh, to Canada through Calgary and into Banff. And uh, we get there middle of the afternoon. Okay. Yeah. And we stay up there for a week and um, watch films all week long. And then probably over 100 films we watch. And uh, My goodness. It's great, though. Yeah. And then we vote on which ones we like, <laughs> and um, they go on tour. The, you know, come down to wherever the shows are going to be in Ogden or whatever do, city. Do they help you pick? Does the Banff <laughs> Foundation or whatever help you? Well, the Banff Center, Center? Um, the Banff Center has um, a group that comes in. They're an international group that comes in and does looks at all the films, and uh, they go through and choose what they like and vote on those. And so that kind of is where that is. Okay. And then all of the hosts that go up um, from different areas in the country meet, and um, we vote on what we like. And then, um, then we get a list of the films that we need to pick from for our show. And then you got to figure out how to make it fit in like exactly. two and a half, three hours or whatever, right? Exactly. Yeah. We've got three nights and only so many films that we can yeah. show. And so, and then I talk with the road warrior who's coming down and. Um, she looks at the program that we've put together and tweaks it a little bit if she thinks something would show better one night like that or if something isn't showing well at all, then we get rid of it. Do you, th do you think after this many years of watching them that there's a, there's a formula or something to make a good uh, film for BAMF or, or you know something that would work well for that format? Wow. I'm not... I'm I'm thinking I know, so go ahead. I'm thinking of the stories like the solo adventure across yeah. long distances yeah. whether it's the desert or Antarctica right, or something. Right. Those are usually fascinating. They are. What's happened is um you know in the beginning it was just Banff started out with climbing because that's what it was. It was just climbing. Just climbing, yeah. total climbing, um dirt bags and um then it progressed with more people uh presenting different films and they had a lot of kayaking um kayaking some skiing um and then more adventure type films like what you were just talking about um they've started with some environmental moving into some environmental situations just because of what's happening yeah it feels like there's at least one or two yeah. environmental type stories each, each there time, is but, yeah. and so that's what but this year we have um one each each evening okay and then um so i think it's leaning more towards that than the climb we do have some climbing and one kayak and we do have more skiing this time than we've had before how many movies because you go you said how many do you watch a hundred in in a yeah. few days yeah how many of them are like i can't believe i just wasted my life <laughs> for the 20 30 minutes or whatever watching this we don't crappy film no. like or are we, they all really pretty good we go in to uh, a little room with computers and we sit there with our headphones mm. on and a lot of them are on demand oh. and um you go through them and it's like i don't want to finish watching that so you can fast forward we fast forward oh, yeah. or we just quit quit you know and then yeah. click to the next mm -hmm. one so that's kind of what we do yeah as a writer i love that 
you know, mm -hmm. people don't like your stuff, they can skip you. Exactly. Um, <laughs> uh, do you? I was wondering about the creation of it for down here. Uh, do you? Do you think that the Road Warrior and yourselves, as those who curate the movies here? Mm -hmm would curate something different, especially with the environmental stuff, you know, because mm -hmm. sometimes you, some places with the environmental stuff, you might be get you might get kickback, right? Exactly. Um, do you think you might curate it differently here than the 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 you in California would create it ba or curate it based on it depends. Your it depends on exactly where it's showing and what your audience is mm -hmm. um, here. Um, yeah, what do we like here? Yeah, that's a that's a good. Yeah. What's our demographic for this kind of thing? <laughs> yeah. Well, there's quite a few that, that do like the environmental films, mm -hmm. you know, and then there's some that really like the action, the skiing, and kayaking, and you know, get the audience all hooped up and that type of thing. Um, but we try to spread it out so that it's kind of an even thing all evening. And we have one long film, or like 40-minute film. We used to have longer than that, but now they've shortened them because uh, you're able to get more short films in, and people enjoy that more than having a 50-minute film. Probably feel like they get more for their money. Sure. That they get a, whole, all, a bunch of different narratives, a bunch of get different stories mm -hmm. for just a short, short evening. Yep. That makes sense. There's one film we're doing this time, and I think it's on the first night, Friday night, that's called To the Hills and Back, and it's a great, it's a true story. It's really, really good, but it's an avalanche, huge avalanche film, mm. and uh, it's it's really good. You just sit there like this. I was watching it on the computer the other night, my husband and I, and I like, he said, you're showing that? And I said, yes, I am. Mm. I said, these guys around here need to see this. Yeah. But it it's an awesome film. Mm. It is. Just beautiful. Just it's, aesthetically it's beautiful. beautiful and scary and sad, yeah. but it's it's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. yeah. Well, it's a lot of years of watching films. I think I've asked you this before, but is there one that stands out that of one of your favorites that you or something that you remember? Shock value, maybe it was like, whoa, wasn't expecting that. No, I mean I hate to say this. It's it was a short film and it was five minutes long, and it was hilarious, and it was. Uh, synchronized fly fishing hmm. with some older men out in the river synchronized fly fishing and it was absolutely hilarious with the music and it was it was fantastic did you show it here we or, did oh, we did mm -hmm. show it here we did mm -hmm. show it here absolutely and the other one was curling oh, cool. which people think oh curling you know but um it's from some town in in uh probably the Minnesota or some Michigan or Minnesota where the, uh, this, this town, they just curl. I mean, that's what they do mm -hmm. for their They do it on a lake or is this? No, like they're doing it on the lake. On the lake. On yeah. the lake. Okay. And they like their liquor quite a bit. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, it was great. It was funny. It was quite a, I'll say older gentlemen uh -huh. that mm -hmm. were doing, the, you know, curling, but it was, it was a good show. They start their kids in the bath that bathtub with little teeny. They do. <laughs> <laughs> Freeze it up. Yeah. Cold yeah. water. <laughs> Cold water. Oh my gosh. Okay, so it is That's a true story. Uh February seventeenth through the nineteenth. We can get right. tickets for Banff now, right? Ogden at Ogden P E T dot com. So what's P E T? That's their webs that's what oh, that's, that's their ticket site. That's the Theater site. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Uh, fundraiser for Harry's Egyptian Theater. Harry's Harry, Egyptian thanks. Theater. I was like, PT. Yeah. I'm I'm thinking uh, <laughs> of Snow Basin's of Ski Education <laughs> Foundation, and I'm like, I can't make it fit in that. No. I couldn't figure it out. But that was the theater's uh, abbreviation. So we buy it through the theater. You buy it through the theater. Benefits Snow Basin. Snow Basin. Okay. Ski team. Um, that's where all the money goes to after we. That was one of those moments you've been singing the, the wrong lyrics for 45 years. And then, <laughs> then you read them and you're like, of course. Do you have a question, Devin? You're leaning like you have a question. Yeah, is some of that money going to the new Schemo team? Probably. Um, Why not? Yeah. 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 Cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jan, if uh, if we're going to make a Banff movie about you, what are we what are we watching? You had to ask that question. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Is this like hardcore snowshoeing? Like, what are we? What are we? Or just like Jan over the years? What film are we going to see if we watched a submission to Banff about Jan? Well, skiing. Yeah. For sure, because I've skied 
since I was 10 years old. A little bit of backpacking, I've, I've, we've and talked then, about earlier. Our Ladies of the Desert group every year yeah. goes, there's 15 of us, we go to the desert for a week. And that sounds like trouble. Yeah. Hmm. Well, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> oh, we need some of this. Yeah, right yeah. Thanks to my mom. Here, I'll put her on yeah. camera for. Thanks to my mom for providing the uh, hot buttered rum buttered tonight. Rum. Cheers. 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 Yeah, Cheers. this is great. So. It smells lovely. <laughs> Sorry, Case. <laughs> <laughs> Case is, is dry January. Yeah, He's very everyone, good about okay. it. I'm yeah. being really good. Yeah, yeah it's really January's good. January's almost gone. <laughs> Not even. It is. I made it so far. Yeah. 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 You're doing great. Um, okay. Well, then, is there anything? You're looking forward to this year, or, or, or is there a show that you can't wait for people to watch this year? I really like the Avalanche. The Avalanche, one, that's right. Back yeah. to the yeah. hills and back, and okay. then there is one that's... Um, that's first night Friday. Uh-huh. Hmm. It's an environmental film on Friday, or Saturday, Sunday night, um, and it's about the, the forests in uh, Alaska, the logging. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And that's, that's they touch on the mining or the gold because it feels like they just destroy I know large vasts of land to do this that. This is a, a huge thing with the logging. And okay. So. Okay. Go see Banff uh, help our local nonprofit there for the kids' ski team. And exactly. Then, uh, which is awesome. And then, and it's boy, is it a terrible three nights, man. It's just suffer fest. It so, is. do you buy tickets yeah. so you can buy a package for three nights? Or, you buy yeah. it, the, or, the tickets are three yeah. nights for $50, mm-hmm. or each night is 20 Okay. Okay. Great. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, Case. Yep. Thanks. I will take that poster to the classroom and say, Woohoo. Extra credit. Extra credit. There well, you go. I like that. <laughs> yeah. What do you teach? Oh, sorry. Oh, um, <laughs> That's the so this is part of the new format is that <laughs> is that the guests actually help carry the show so Jan asking questions is a good thing so okay. case yes case. what do you teach at St Joe's um I teach English oh do you mm-hmm. great mm-hmm. mostly yeah my grandkids went there oh did they mm-hmm. yeah okay I love St Joe's <laughs> I do I love St Joe's I just never thought I'd be teaching there. <laughs> Uh, Greg is school. the um, general manager. Thanks, Jan. I appreciate that. That yes. was good. That was awesome. Um, Greg's the general manager of, of Gear 30. That used to be my job, and now it's Greg's job. He's been doing it for about four or five months now. So he's totally comfortable with the job. But what I'd really like to talk about is when is um, your son going to put out his own film on skis? I don't know. Sometime soon, maybe. I mean, I mean we, got, we got a Colby that films everything, right? Yeah. So yeah, for now you'll just have to uh, enjoy his Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What's his handle? It's Bruce in the Wild. Cool. Bruce. In Bruce the in the Wild. And Bruce is wow. Bruce crushes it. He's how old? He's eleven. Eleven. Nice. And he did compete in one of the races last year. Do you yeah, plan on doing that again yeah, this he's year? He's got another one coming. Another up. Another one coming up. Here. Okay. All right. Bruce in the Wild. Bruce in the Wild. Go um, subscribe. Yeah. Go follow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, we ski around together a lot, and I video him with my phone, and we post nice pictures and videos of it. It's kind of fun. He's he's a ripper, though. Yeah. That's cool. Greg's Greg makes me feel bad as a as a parent. He takes his kids all the time outside to do. I mean, so he did. Um, Something that a lot of people may not know. Listen to this podcast. They they would know if they listen to the Gear Thirty podcast. But and and what was the handle again? Bruce, Bruce, <laughs> Bruce in the wild. Bruce, if, they're, if they follow Bruce, if they in the follow wild, Bruce in the wild, they would know, know too. Know well. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they ski. Tell me how many months you have skied uh, out of the whole year. We're on month twenty-seven consecutive now. Mm-hmm. Oh wow! So that means you have to go find snow in the summer in yeah. wild places like in the Pacific Northwest and stuff. Yeah, we've gone to some pretty pretty cool places. And what what's your rules? What counts as a run? Uh, well, we've tried to do a thousand vertical feet. And so on okay. some of the like little patches of dirt snow that we see <laughs> in July, well, yeah. August and September, yeah, August and yeah. September, sometimes that means you've got to do a handful of laps to, okay. And I don't know that we've hit a thousand feet every time. There's probably been a few where we've been short, but that's kind of like generally the, the target for okay a day of skiing. Yeah. How long are you going to keep going with this? I don't know. So, so far it's been fun. I don't have any plans on quitting anytime soon. So. Is it easier in the winter? I mean, <laughs> we, don't, we, don't even really, we don't even really count the days oh in the God. winter. It's yeah. kinda, you, you just know. Yeah, yeah. May, May through October are <laughs> like the ones where you have to kind of start working for it a little bit. You yeah. need to go with the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah, it'd be That's fun. A, yeah. yeah, that'd be so rad. That's yeah. a blast. Yeah. 
that's a blast. Yeah. Yeah, where have you skied in the, in the south? To Chile. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. Valley, like, Valley yeah. Nevada and El Colorado and, yeah. Okay. Yes. Now, I've always wanted to go to New Zealand and mm-hmm. ski there. It's, it's I mean, also that's summer. more expensive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Devin, well, what is your side hustle? Side hustle? Yeah. <laughs> ski patrolling, I guess? Yeah, yeah. Just right. a little bit of ski patrolling. Yeah, I'm pretty well split down the middle, but... Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you half the time ski patrol, half the time at the shop, essentially? You got it. Okay. Yeah. Is Greg trying, trying to get you more at the shop? Because uh, Greg's also ski patrol, but he's probably pulled back because of his duties at the shop. But He works more ski patrol than I do. Wow. Impressive. No, we're both three days a week. Then you took a day off. You're on two days a week? No, I'm saying you took a day off. Oh, you took it. <laughs> no, well, I, my, my schedule at Gear 30 is a little bit more up or down or whatever during the week. I'm three days at patrol and then usually at the store four days a week. Okay, okay. Hit or, hit or miss, you know. Hit or miss. Um, what have you learned at Gear 30 being the general manager? Because uh, were you manager of anything before? Uh, I've managed some small stuff Sm- before. But, but, okay, yeah. but this is a big shop. Yeah. Yeah, and retail, and it's hard because it's, it's outdoor retail mm-hmm. and there's a lot of competition. So like, yeah, uh, how are we doing? I mean, we're plugging along. Yeah, I mean, we would definitely appreciate all our local uh, outdoor people to shop local as much as possible. You know, there's some yeah. other great shops in Ogden also, but I think small local retail shops are just, you know, it's it's more and more difficult all the time. Well, I, yeah, and I think what you you mean sort of by that is that it's so easy to buy online. For sure, you can buy online at Gear Thirty too, just yes. so people know. Yeah, yeah. not Amazon and yeah, REI, the big boys. But we really do pri- try to provide like a. A quality experience in the store and we have knowledgeable staff that can educate people and help people ride, buy the right products that they need yeah so. Devin? but we can't be taken advantage of like the big box stores so please you know like explain that though Devin. what does that mean we can't move that mic your, over to you yeah you can't take back your used gear like backcountry <laughs> and rei and just sell it again that's not really what are you kidding a me productive retail business oh. no but that sucks because we can't you can't as a small shop but no. but people try and it's and it's it's a shame but instead we offer killer customer service try and make it right the first time i see that too um from the reviews that keep coming in all the time because i get the emails but your your customer service level is five star typically all the it time is. yeah yeah which is good yeah we got good staff that helps make the difference. I it's think. like you. And I <laughs> me, me and Devin are. <laughs> <laughs> we have a good staff. No, because no, you sort of rehired. Because you went slim. You went slim for a little while. But you sort of rehired up right before Christmas. So you, there are more people working now. Yeah. Yeah. handful of fellow patrol who are sort yeah. of like one day a week filling out the days when we need extra help when our schedules aren't overlapping. Avery, Greg, or I. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, most, I mean, for the most part, it's two of us in the shop every day. Yeah. That's the goal. And to minimize the hourly overhead. Right. At least the manager on the floor. Yeah. Uh, Devin, where are you from? Southeastern Wisconsin. How'd you get into uh, mountain sports? And are there big mountains back there? No. Working on a 300 <laughs> foot ski hill. That got me into the mountains. Really? 300 feet. Yeah. Ice? That would be Trollhagen. You betcha. Uh, oh. Alpine Valley. Alpine, Alpine Valley. Valley. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nice. And don't, don't I didn't know they named hills. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're developed hills. Come it, on. It's like, it's like a, a pasture, a farm. Uh huh. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Just a little hill. Yeah, we mow the grass and, on and then it. You go down we all mow summer. The grass I'm dead serious. <laughs> so like straight up it, like that. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. fairly steep. Yeah, you're yeah. gonna, you know, yeah. you're driving a big tractor up and down. Yeah. And so, when when was the first time you skied big mountains? Hmm. How old were you? Uh, adult. Adult. 19. <laughs> adult. Okay. Yeah, nineteen or twenty. Where at? Uh, my first real ski trip, I guess the the first resort we went to was Grand Targhee. Mm. Oh, I love it. Yeah. So how was it? I mean, how were the, Amazing. How were the, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we were, <laughs> yeah, we were skiing. The skills crossed over. Uh, actually, you know, uh, we I, I definitely hung in there. Yeah. yeah. I was skiing powder, and it was a good time. Did yeah. you ask anybody if they mow? Like, Did do you they? mow? <laughs> no. I knew better. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> um, oh. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's, that's but, a cool uh, place to start, though. Yeah, it's yeah, hard to yeah, super cool. Mm-hmm. And I was so ignorant. I thought I was like, oh, I'm gonna, I should ski that sweet untracked line off the back of Mary's nipple. So unaware of avalanche uh, train and backcountry uh, skiing and what that. Did meant. they have it roped off or? No, it's open. Just yeah, okay. it's just an open boundary with like signs. They just say like area boundary. Yeah, we don't and need then to read those. There's a handful of gates, but. Okay. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I just thought, oh, I'll just hike back up. That would have been a nightmare. Well, they're going to show an intriguing avalanche movie at the at that. the BAM. At the BAM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So are. here we are four years ago, uh, <laughs> having gone through both the recreational level area courses, a couple rescues, and a pro one mm-hmm. just recently. Just so. recently. Oh, good yeah. for you. That's awesome. On the track to the instructor trainer course and maybe do an avalanche education in the future. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's is, great. Yeah. yeah. Is this where you see yourself in five years? Is coaching avalanche safety or what do you what are your plans maybe still having a foot in and or you know both feet in at gear 30 while hosting avalanche education mm-hmm. courses on a weekend basis yeah and uh maybe ski patrol actually kind of falls off a little bit okay yeah okay. have uh, you seen an uptick in people who are wanting to take those courses now that with a with a snow year like this i mean is there do you guys see differences in covid was the big oh, actual really? uh Emphasis on like people wanting to be in the backcountry yeah, and get yeah, educated yeah. doing it. Huh. So interesting. Yeah. There's definitely a market for it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's necessary. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Saving lives. Yeah. That's the Important. goal. It is. Yeah. I know we went, our group went up um, Farmington Peak and it was with Weber State and we were up there for, I think we went up there two days in a row and did the, learned all about the avalanche how to check and what to do and so if you went with weber state then you're with the the local ogden avalanche guys huh it's been years ago Corey and ben this was a long time it's probably a while back okay it's before before that probably yeah okay maybe daniel but how long ago was it a long 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 long, yeah and then in canada we we went heli skiing in canada a couple times and and uh, had to do it all over again up there before we they'd let us ski so yeah. Just verify your abilities. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's smart. Yeah. Oh yeah. <clears throat> uh, Greg, talk about talk about your uh, your kids real quick because you you're pretty good at getting them out all the time. That's mm-hmm. something that you learn from your dad, or it's just something that you feel like. <laughs> I don't know where that cut up, but something that you just feel like you got to go. Yeah. Precious moments with them right now, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I did a lot of stuff with my dad. I don't think my dad's like um, crazy outdoorsman necessarily, but I did grow up spending a lot of time with my dad. My dad owned an HVAC business growing up. Hardcore. Yeah. yeah. So I grew up like doing, you know, spending my summers doing construction with him and stuff. And I think like my dad, I combo work with time with my kids. So when I'm ski patrolling, I have a at least one kid in tow most of the time mm-hmm. sometimes two <laughs> all right um and it's fun it's good quality time when i'm also working so and that's okay you can do that at your job i guess yeah so kind of my routine with my kids is once they're able to be left on their own then i'll start taking them with me on the days when i'm working because obviously when i'm working that takes priority so i have to be able to yeah. split and leave them you know if i get a call or something i have to take care of i got to be able to leave the kids but they've been able to do that at a pretty young age where do you patrol so, at powder mountain powder mountain yeah and that's winter what do you do in the summer gear 30 well no, <laughs> now now <laughs> yeah. but with the kids because i mean i've seen you taking them yeah. um hiking and fly vision and that kind of yeah stuff. yeah we try to do well, i mean we're kind of an outside family we got we've yeah. kind of gotten into some white water stuff and oh that's right yeah, me, bruce and i obviously been skiing on the summers bruce and, in the wild bruce yeah. in the wild yeah my family has a little cabin up uh an Island Park, Idaho, just outside mm. of West Yellowstone. So we spend a lot of time hiking, playing around up in that area during the summer. Follow Bruce in the wild because, Greg, you post, but not as often maybe as Bruce does. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, most of the stuff that's on his account, stuff that I'm posting, just videos that, that I've taken of him. Yeah. And we've mostly been out skiing. Yeah, mostly little ski clips and stuff. But uh, inspirational as uh, as a dad. So I want to say thanks because you you do a very good job of taking the kids out and exposing yeah. them to the outdoors. And I think it's important. Yeah, I mean, you you asked her what her what her Banff film would be yeah. about. Mine mine would probably be like adventuring with my kids. Yeah, That'd yeah. Be yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you bought a bus. Yeah. Is so. that thing running? It's running. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely had some issues, but 
Yeah, I bought a mini school bus hmm. as my like adventure rig, but it's I'm not I'm not like a. Are you sold still on it, or do you think you're gonna trade it in? You know, I kind of miss my van. To be yeah. honest, like, dude, yeah. you crushed it in the van. Yeah, I had a van before that, and I sold the van and got the bus, and I think <laughs> I kind of miss having just the van, but. But yeah, I'm always in the on the hunt for like the perfect adventure rig for a family of six, you know. <laughs> Which the per- <laughs> Google that the yeah. perfect adventure rig for a family of six. Yeah. What size motorhome pops up? Like yeah, that is right. not easy to do. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. All right, sounds good. Um, well, thanks and good luck um, running Gear Thirty. It's a tough shop. It's a fun shop though. We got a lot of a lot of cool gear, and we're we're plugging along. Yeah, lots yeah. of good vibes. Vibes are vibes are good. Vibes are good, and the deals are good right now because really? there's like the weird, but it end of January, February is end of season for sales start. Not yeah. just with us, a lot of people, but yeah, yeah, starting to cloud some winter, hmm. winter stuff. So. Yeah, so if you want skis or snowboards halfway through the season, get, you can get deals on them now because it's post Christmas. Mm-hmm. Right now, it's like thirty five. Yeah, we got thirty five percent off hard goods right now. Winter mm-hmm. hard goods, so. which is awesome. So. Uh, okay, anything else? Uh, mm. I mean, we're going to be gearing up for spring and summer coming up soon. So. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Kind of kind of almost shifting gears now into the, into the next season. That is not wild because it's, it's so cold outside today. Yeah. It's, like, it's so cold outside today. Well, spring is officially what? February? No. no. March. No. <laughs> something, right? Is it March or I, May? It's February one for me. It's a, that's a, <laughs> that's a spring. I can have I can have rum. I can <laughs> <laughs> that's a new life. Yeah. The day of rumming. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so I do have. Well, actually, case I need you for arts arts um, update us on your um, novels and your I'm I'm working on slowly i apologize your book the audio version so there's that talk about that and then also any upcoming projects uh well i think we did a lot with bamf didn't we for the arts i think we covered oh, the, uh, no I think we, you have I think, to talk about you i'd rather, talk about, I'd rather talk about bruce <laughs> <laughs> like, bruce seems pretty rad i just had bruce come i in know bruce yeah. come in you know um <laughs> these hills in wisconsin yeah. Fasc- oh they're fa- it's fascinating to me it really is my wife's from kansas they do stuff like that you know <laughs> Yeah, I guess. ski Nebraska hashtag ski yeah ski <laughs> Kansas it's new it's, <laughs> it's sweeping it's Bruce sweeping the Midwest um yeah sure I have your um, book in here at least yeah sure uh yeah the that book's doing great that book did so well uh, Wild Grasses did great four awards um maybe one more to come it's in it's a finalist for another um. Let the wild grasses grow. That one's went out, came out last November, not this for November, November, two Novembers ago. It just has legs, has legs. I'll be in. It's good. It's good I'll be story. in Colorado uh, reading for that in June and in, in Zion in February to read from that and to teach. Uh, just so it's, it's really cool. New book will be coming out. Uh, Castaway will be coming out in um, April 2024. So that's a long way away, but still. Uh, oh wow, that's far ahead, huh? Yeah, it's coming. It, you know, it's right now. It's in copy editing. Then we get the all the other stuff. The, okay, uh, we need. We have to talk about the Uptown Bar. The Uptown is, Bar. Is that, the Uptown it, Bar. Yeah. The up, uptown Bar. Actually, got shut down by my agent. Oh, so I sad. Her, I sent her. Two, Finally, shut down. Two, huh? oh, I've been trying to do it for three years. Um, she. I sent her three novel ideas where I kind of send her like 6,000 words and say, which one, which one do you think clicks here? Which one do you like? Which one do you think you can sell? Yeah. And she didn't pick that one. Mm. Um, but I love the idea of the up, uptown bar, uh, but it's going to die. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Real, real quick. The, the, the thesis, the premise, the premise of it. Of yeah. It. It's about, there was a bar and this is kind of like, I mean, you, you've pretty driven across country, you know, it's like there's small towns across country that are just dead Mm -hmm. and they're all 15 miles away from the one town that has a Walmart. That one town that has a Walmart survives and every town around it is just their town squares are boarded up. They're dead. There's no shops, you know, there's, they're, they've they've just died because the Walmart sucks everything to that one town. Um, and so it's about a town like that and it's, uh, there has been a bar, a whole kind of old, like, uh, you know, those old bars that have been around forever, uh, dive bars and you know, it was only serves whiskey and beer for like 30 years and then somebody else tries to uh, 
open up and it's called the uptown bar, but there's no downtown. So they, the, the next person called their bar, the up uptown bar. And then they, 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 uh, open next door and then there's a murder because of it. Um, <laughs> but it got shot down. So maybe next time, maybe I'm going to, you know, maybe when I'm bored or a little, yeah. dr- a little drunk, I can just fiddle with that thing a little bit. Yeah. 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 Uh, I love it. Okay. Yeah. So, That's too much about me though. So, <laughs> so where are you going in Colorado for your reading? Uh, Denver. So oh. Lit Fest 2023, I guess. Okay. Are we in 2023? Lit Fest 2023. Lit, lit Fest is not what you think. It's li- literary. Literary Fest, literary. yes. Yeah, yeah there will be, people will be a little lit. Um, <laughs> probably will be. <laughs> yeah. Um, I hope so. Yeah, it's like, yeah. It is Colorado. It's Colorado. It is, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, it, it's going to be great. I'll be teaching oh. three workshops, historical fiction workshop, a memoir workshop, and then a publishing workshop for oh my gosh. Lighthouse Writers. Look at this. Todd is Todd is calling Call in. Todd, Todd in. Yeah, oh Todd, my. say something. Let's see if we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I can hear you. What's up, uh, Todd? Yeah. Hey, Todd. Yeah, hey, you guys. You look like you're on I'm the just, streets in Sundance. Oh. Do you recognize where I'm at? Well, you're in Park City. <laughs> yeah, can you see? Can you see that over there? Let's see. I'm trying to. I'm trying to see it. Anyway, I'm, I I definitely thought of you guys. It's a yeah. Uh, Stanley Lodge. They bought out a space. So how great is that? Like Stanley Mugs? Like Stanley PMI? Yeah. Like, <laughs> nice. Yep. Like Stanley Mugs. Yep. Nice. Okay. Very good. Uh, what show are you going to see tonight? All right. So tonight I'm seeing a movie called uh, Flora and Sun. Do you guys remember a movie that came out 15 years ago called Once? Once. 15 Anybody years see ago. that? Took place in Ireland. Takes place in Dublin. Is it like? Um, a, is anyway. it like about music? Was it's it? about music. Yes. Yeah, yeah. If that's you have right. not seen yeah. it, you yeah, should it's see good. It. That's a really good one. Yeah. And they uh, see, they, they, they sing together. Carney yeah. Yeah. Directed it. Uh, John Carney was in a band called The Frames a million years ago. With the lead, his name was Glenn Hansard, who was in Once. Anyway, he's directing a film tonight called Floor and Sons, and this one is starring, uh, and I can't remember her name. I'll find out tonight. Hopefully, when I see her, it's uh, Bono's daughter. Oh. Who's a musician and actress? So, but, so you're just gonna hang out with Bono's daughter tonight? <laughs> yeah, that's the idea. And so, because <laughs> of that, guess where we're eating tonight? Can you see it? Yeah, Flanagan's. Anyway, Irish pub. Flanagan's. Irish pub. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. On theme. <laughs> On theme. Nice work, Todd. <laughs> and if there's an it's open, all about the theme. If open mic, you gotta go for it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, let me listen in for a few minutes. Well, we're about we're about wrapped. <laughs> oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah, we're we're about done. So you called in in the in the nick of time. We were just going. Case was bragging uh, <laughs> reluctantly about his about his work, but uh, yeah, we were excited. Jan did say Jan, she did mention that there's a going to be a really good Avalanche film on Friday at Banff. So um, you know, have fun out there in Sundance. It looks cold, but you look like you're all bundled up and. <laughs> Warm, I so. think it's still a little bit warmer than Ogden right now, so that's not too bad. Oh, really? That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, how was I, I used this new system. You, was that fine? Did that work? Yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, it mm-hmm. works with the iPhone, so that's good. And if you guys heard me, that's even better. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm can, so glad I could call in for a few minutes. Yeah. Can you see anybody in the studio? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I okay. see the bench. You saw, see the bench? <laughs> <laughs> Greg mm-hmm. and Devin and Case is here. Uh, and Case is managing. Uh, a few, a couple smart ass comments, which is good. <laughs> Thank you for representing Case. I appreciate that. <laughs> that I was trying to channel you. <laughs> <laughs> you should have just let me know you needed smart ass comments. Sure. Started. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, and my my mom's here, so I don't, she is here and she's hanging out and she brought a hot buttered rum. So I'm sorry I had to miss that. <laughs> Whatever. I've already had a couple of. Irish coffees and uh, Guinness, so I'm good. <laughs> we kind of figured that. Yeah, oh, yeah. I feel real, feel real bad for you. Uh, you don't seem unhappy. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'm not cold in the slightest. Is basically what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, very good. Well, I'll I'll take us out. Um, thanks to Banyan One for powering today's episode of the Ogden Arts and Adventure Show. Listen and subscribe to the Ogden Arts and Adventure Show on YouTube. That's the best place to find us because you can see all of our wonderful, beautiful faces. Look for us on Facebook, Instagram, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TheBanyanCollective.com, and the Podbean app for Android and iPhones. If you want to be on the show and it works, uh, we had Luna on last week, local tattoo artist. She just reached out via Instagram. So if you want to be on the show, reach out at Ogden Adventure on Instagram. This week's Outdoor Jukebox, this is the whole damn town. Um, by the artist 
uh, Taylor Lacey, and we're releasing all of his stuff this week. Uh, Todd, thanks for calling in, man. Have a good night, you guys. Okay, you too. Yep, we'll see you. Okay, bye. That's it. We'll see you on the next Ogden Auction Adventure show. See you other. you've been building when have you seen your wife and children do you even really want to see them Black trench coats making an offer. Stocks are falling now, at least you got her. To tighten knot and a bourbon shot in an empty bottle. Sell your soul, but they ain't no buyer. Hearing sounds and spinning around like clothes in a dryer. Years of it and an ER trip to cross the wire. Make you realize What do you call a man who ain't himself? Pieces of who he was till he got help. Mary Shelley's monster ain't the worst news. Just a broken man they never understood Just a broken man they never understood I was a broken man they never Yourself a shell, me on this Lord of the flies. I'm burning down the whole damn town to make you realize. Yeah. Thank you, Taylor Lacey on Van Sessions. Good stuff, Taylor.